So what is an edge? An edge is a point in the image where intensities are changing rapidly. So we've looked at the Sobel edge operator, which does a digital approximation to the first derivative. Uh, this mask does a derivative in the x direction. This mask does a derivative in the y direction. And we can take the um, magnitude of the gradient by the square root of the sum of the squares. So that's a way to detect um, places in the image where intensities are changing rapidly. However, the magnitude of the gradient does, doesn't identify an edge point. It simply gives you a number. What we would really like to have is a sort of a binary output. We want, yes, there is an edge there, or no, there isn't an edge there. Here's an example of applying the Sobel edge detector to this image and just um, outputting the gradient magnitude. So as you can see, I have um, a gradient magnitude everywhere, uh, places in the image where there is a large contrast uh, step edge. I have a high gradient magnitude. Uh, places in the background where it's much weaker, I have a lower gradient magnitude. But this is, this is not a binary output. This gives me a value at each pixel. So one way to get a binary output is to threshold the edge, the gradient magnitudes. So um, the choice, the problem now is deciding the threshold. If I use a low threshold, I get lots of edge points. If I use a high threshold, I get few edge points. Um, so another problem is that even thresholding using a high threshold, we can get um, edge points that are more than one pixel wide along a contour. What we'd really like is for a line in the scene to have a one pixel line edge, edge line in the edge image. So one way to get that is to look, um, is to only take the point as an edge that's the local maximum of the gradient in the direction of the gradient. So let's say in this region, we find that the edge, that the gradient magnet direction is in this direction. We scan in that direction and only take the edge point as if it's bigger than the neighbor to above and below in this direction. So this is called non-maxima suppression. One thing all edge operators deal with is noise. So noise greatly um, compounds the problem of detecting edges. Even a small amount of noise greatly affects the output. This first column is the original image of a, um, a ramp edge. So this is the one-dimensional profile showing it going up like this. So we add a very small amount of noise to this image, a little bit bigger here, a little bit bigger here. The second column is the first derivative of the image. So with no noise, of course, you get what you expect, namely zero, and then a high derivative, and then a zero. But even a very, very small amount of noise gives you quite a bit of noise in the first derivative, to the point where it's almost unusable. And it, the problem is even worse in the second derivative, which is shown in this column. So all practical edge operators have to smooth the image before they take the derivative. So that begs a question now, like how much should you smooth the image? Well, it depends on your application and the image. So some images um, we would want to smooth a lot because we're looking for big things. Other images, uh, very little because we're looking for very small or fine detail. So, for example, if we were looking for the little dots in this image, we wouldn't want to do very much smoothing at all. But if all we were interested in was the big structures like these rings, we would smooth a lot. And, of course, other images like this tree, we would want to know, are we, going, are we interested in the overall shape of the tree or just the, or the branches itself? So um, we can define this concept of scale space, where we form a space of images by applying a series of operators at different scales. So the Gaussian is a 
natural choice for this smoothing operator because it has this parameter sigma, which is a standard deviation of the Gaussian. We can adjust the sigma to essentially make the Gaussian wider or narrower. So by making the Gaussian wider or increasing the sigma, we do more smoothing and we see less and less structure. With a very small sigma, we, we see very fine detail. So uh, convolving or blurring the image with a Gaussian wipes out all structure much less than the sigma parameter. So the derivative of a Gaussian, we can combine the derivative operator and the blurring operator. Um, if we blur the image with a Gaussian and then take the, the gradient magnitude, that's equivalent to taking the gradient of the Gaussian and then convolving it with the image because the convolution operator is associative. So what is the gradient of a Gaussian? If you just compute the derivatives of the Gaussian equation, you find that it's, it's this expression right here. So it's essentially x times an exponential of x squared plus y squared. So in a one-dimensional profile, it looks like this. This would be the gradient in the x direction, for example, and we would also have one in the y direction. So we would apply these operators to the image and then signal an edge point if it is the peak of the gradient magnitude as a result of, of this operator. So the canny edge operator is probably the most common and widely used edge operator. So what Canny did was he derived the optimal edge operator to find step edges in the presence of white noise. And where optimal means first good detection, so you want to minimize the probability of detecting false edges and missing real edges. Good localization, meaning that detected edges must be close to the true edges. And single response, we only want to return one point for each true edge point. So through numerical simulation, Canny found that he found the ideal edge operator, and he found that a very good approximation to it is the first derivative of a Gaussian in the direction of the gradient, so exactly what we saw previously. And then, of course, you suppress non-maxima along the direction of the gradient. So the algorithm for the Canny operator is to convolve the image with the derivative of the Gaussian in x and y, find the gradient direction at each pixel, and quantize it into one of four directions, uh, north-south, east-west, northeast-southwest, northwest-southeast. And then if the ma magnitude of the gradient is larger than the two neighbors along that direction, it's, it's an edge point. 